we're in this information war right now and there's a lot of people who are stuck in the mainstream and they can't think past the mainstream narrative they can't they can't go beyond it they can't fathom the possibility that there's another way to look at the world they can't fathom the, the idea that things are not as they seem and that there's more to this world because they're NPCs and so their perception of someone who thinks differently than they do is they must be crazy and there are a lot of things that um, are presented to us they are presented to us on purpose to distract you send you down endless rabbit holes that are meaningless and a big waste of time and uh, a lot of the conspiracy stuff is just an indicator of what to look at it's a clue but it's also a red herring and you want to believe it because you are in the fear trap there is a difference between that stuff and real truth it seems that no matter how many times I try to tell people that these fear-based things are fake, people just want to believe it. They're afraid. They point at the evidence. They say, look at, look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that. And they don't want to move past the fear. Many people who are waking up to the deception there's there's no way they're going to be able to move past this level it's just a fact i've said many times that you go from one set of lies to another a big rule of thumb a simple rule of thumb is that if it evokes fear it's fake the alternative media is just as controlled as the mainstream media if you think channels like rebel news are giving you the truth you got a long way to go they're giving the, you the other side of the bullshit story. For example, they will show you the trampled lady at the Ottawa protests with the truckers. And they will show that their reporter got attacked. And they will show how, oh, how horrible these police officers are. They're just showing you the other side of the fakery. They will never show you that there was no trampled lady. They will never show you that it was a setup and a total staged act that their reporter got hit. They will never tell you this because they themselves are a fake setup. They are lying to you just like mainstream media. All of the Illuminati stuff, they throw it in your face as uh, evil, so you don't want to look at it anything that they tell you they being the people who control the system anything that is coming from the system and they tell you that it's evil you should probably look at it because the truth is in there i know there's plenty of you who are stuck on certain beliefs and you are afraid to let go of them because that is your comfort level because of your fear your fear keeps you there and you cannot admit to yourself that it is fear that is keeping you there because your ego doesn't want you to believe that you are in fear. So a lot of people are, uh, they, they close their ears, they close their eyes to things because they don't want to hear it because it goes against what they believe and their beliefs are blocking them. That's the mental construct that's preventing you from seeing the truth. So you're going to get caught in these conspiracy theories and all these conspiracy theories are fearful. And again, a lot of people are in denial as to what fear actually is. If you are not looking at something, then that's fear. If you are believing in a devil or Satan or Lucifer as evil, that's fear. If you think that you're being watched and surveilled by the government, that's fear. If you think 5G is going to kill you, that's fear. You have to understand you've been living in fear so long, you don't even know how to recognize fear. It's become a safety net for people living in fear. Your fear keeps you safe. 
You have to move past that and you have to be able to look at these things and realize that they are fake. Why do these things to people if they can just pretend they're doing it and keep you from behaving a certain way simply by keeping you scared? They can shut you up by scaring you if you believe that they're going to kill you for talking out. I would like to explain the different types of people within the truth community. So there are living beings, NPCs. There are, within the NPCs, there are narcissists, agents, trolls. Agents can fall into category of um, either they physically are agents, like in the physical world, or they are metaphysically agents. Either way, they're NPCs because they're not designed to see the truth. If you were a living being and you were hired to do something like this, then you would see through it and you would quit your job. So if you are an agent in the physical, you probably work for the CIA whether you know it or not. Somebody hired you. Um, and said, here, start a YouTube channel and here's some scripts, make some videos. They are called shills because they are working for someone and not disclosing it. They don't care about you. They're not in it for the truth. They're NPCs. Um, they will never move past the conspiracy level of truth. If, if you are um, aware of some of the more esoteric knowledge, but you do not apply it to your life, and you cannot apply it to your life, or you don't see the purpose, you don't see how, you don't understand how, you're probably an NPC. If you don't know how to access true love, if you don't know how to go about the healing process, and this is really something that you have to figure out for yourself, because it is an individual process, because each one of us has individual wounds we need to heal. If you don't know how to go about doing that, you're probably an NPC. So yeah, there are physical agents who are physically employed in the physical world. They are here to disseminate the truth in a controlled fashion so that you are pointed in the right direction so that the real living beings will figure out, okay, go this way and look at this but the NPCs will get caught up in the deception that this, these agents put out and will not move past it. So the other kind of agent is a metaphysical agent and these people do not know that they are operating as a metaphysical agent. Again, they are NPCs. They thoroughly believe that they are genuinely learning the truth but then they hit a wall and they kind of do the same kind of work as these people who work as physical agents, only they're not aware of it and they're not actually employed by anybody. So a few other truthers from years ago who allegedly died and immediately the truther community rallies around these deaths saying that they were killed. No, nobody is getting killed for telling the truth. Nobody. These people who uh, die, first of all, are fake. Second, the there are people who are real who die. Like my friend Tara, she died. And there's a couple other people I am familiar with who died for real. And then nobody came after them because they were telling the truth. They just died. I found it offensive that people think these people are being bumped off for telling the truth. And they have been telling nothing but garbage. So they've revered these people so much because they're dead. I mean, they fall into that the mainstream trap of revering people because they're dead and don't talk badly about them because they're dead. How dare you because they're dead? They're not dead. Their character died. Their facade died. 
they they were removed from YouTube and they no longer exist in the YouTube land. And yeah, they have obituaries in the newspaper, but who you can put an obituary in the newspaper for somebody who doesn't exist. They put all sorts of things in the news that are fake. You think they can't put an obituary in the news that's fake? No one's coming to kill you because you are a truther. No one's coming to kill you because you are telling the truth on YouTube. They will censor you. They will threaten you. They will harass you and hound you and send trolls and bots and agents after you. Yeah, they'll do that. They'll scare you. But that's part of the process. If you can't handle it, then you will get off YouTube. You will shut up. But you have to push past it. If you're a real living being and you are telling the truth and people are harassing you, you're going to have to get through it. That's part of the process. Because the truth has to matter more than that shit. So the reason I find a lot of this offensive is because of the harassment that I have been through in the past five years for telling the truth. I am not in fear of my life. I don't think I've ever been in fear of my life because I've been telling the truth. I have been bullied, harassed, threatened, told to shut up, told to stop talking. I have had people send me vicious messages, vicious emails. I've had narcissistic abuse. I've had people out of nowhere send me messages that are full of hate. People form mentally ill attachments to me. I have no relationship with, with them whatsoever. I've had people make videos about me, uh, hateful videos. They pretend to be my friend, then all of a sudden they turn on me. To hear people say that some truther knows too much and should be bumped off because they know too much is insulting and ridiculous. And you should know that just from looking at all the truthers out there who know more than these shield channels. There's so many of them. I do think that the truth attracts narcissists because especially ones who don't know they're narcissists because they can hide behind it. The truth would attract a narcissist because uh, the fact that real truthers don't, um, they don't like society, they reject society, they reject mainstream, but a narcissist who rejects the mainstream does so because they can't cope or they can't succeed in the real world. And a narcissist would be an NPC. A narcissist, not, it's not necessarily all N NPCs are narcissists, but all narcissists are absolutely NPCs. The reason they're attracted to the truth is because they can hide behind it and use it as an excuse to be a failure in society. I would imagine that it attracts all sorts of narcissists. Um, I. I really do, but I'm specifically talking about the ones that hide behind the truth and use it as a facade. They play on the empathy of others who are genuinely empathetic in the community and they're frustrated with all the people around them so when they find out about NPCs they can project that onto all the people around them that they hate and just discard them because they're NPCs. Whereas a real empathetic person, no matter what, even when they know people are NPCs and they, these NPCs annoy them, they don't discard them and they don't hate them and they don't get angry at them. They still treat them like people. And so if, it, if an NPC happens to be an asshole and treats them like an asshole, well then they're going to treat them back the way they deserve to be treated in order to protect themselves, which is very different from an, a, a narcissist who shits all over people because, oh, they're just NPCs anyway, it doesn't matter, and use that as an excuse to be 
uh, hostile and project their hatred onto the world and onto the people around them. The part that really appeals to narcissists, I think of all levels, is the spiritual side of it. The spiritual side where you have to heal your chakras and return to heart center. Now, the problem with narcissists is they don't have a heart. They don't have empathy, they don't have a heart, and this is this is why narcissists are NPCs because they don't have a heart, they don't have a soul. They are soulless beings. But if you ask them, they would probably say they have a heart, they would probably say that they love people, and they would probably say those things, especially the mid-rangers, but they really don't. They really don't know what love is. They're incapable of loving because they can't love themselves because when they look within, all they see is a big gaping hole, which is why you look within for the answers you look within. If you do that and you can't find anything, then you are going to just mimic you will take the knowledge and just mimic and repeat it to people to give the impression that you are doing the work. But you're not actually doing the work. There's an incongruency between what they say and what they do. What they say they are and what they actually are. So, you have to be knowledgeable about these people. It's almost like a witch hunt right now for narcissists against narcissists and a lot of empathetic people might feel bad for these people these broken people because pretty much everybody here is broken which is why our heart center is split into seven colors plus there's a lot of narcissists around this world because we live in the world with a narcissistic mind and so these narcissists are extensions of the system again all narcissists are NPCs so they're all extensions of the system and when I talk about narcissists I'm talking about people who with no empathy who are um, narcissistic personality disorder not people with narcissistic traits that doesn't make them a narcissist doesn't make them have a personality disorder I'm talking about people with a personality disorder. You can have an egoic outburst or you can have someone provoke you and get you angry and and it will appear as if um, a normal person is exhibiting narcissistic traits, but that doesn't mean that they are a narcissist. So you have to be very wise and be very careful about labeling somebody who does something you don't like as a narcissist when they're not. That's why you need to be informed. It comes down to, are they abusing you? If somebody's abusing you, then it doesn't matter, just leave. Or, you know, if you talk to them about it and they don't change their behavior, then leave. Um, there are narcissists who use the truth and create platforms to uh, make money off of the truth in a, in a manipulative and deceiving way. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about you. They care about making money. They see an opportunity. They'll, they'll take things like flat earth and sell it to you and they'll manipulate you, toy with you, entertain you, get attention from you. There, there are people who will take a branch of the truth and just suck your energy because they want attention. Because what, a be what better forum for them to attract a bunch of empaths to give them a, b a bunch of energy and attention and money than the truth? Because most of the people who are in the truth community are going to be empaths. It's like a shark in a school of fish. Narcissists are imperative to our growth as uh, living beings because they will cause trauma in you, things that you need to purge, things that you need to heal, bringing it to the surface because 
you haven't done it yourself or you weren't aware of it, so you needed it to be brought to the surface. And it is a traumatic way to go about it, a painful way to go about it, but it is a fast way to go about it. There's no faster way to grow than being wounded by a narcissist. And that's the 911, the emergency, the chakra healing system at work, which helps you understand as well what the mind of this false consciousness, this ego consciousness is. Also, because these narcissists are NPCs that they provoke this suffering in you, they are in a way portals for this ego uh, consciousness that harvest your energy and attention and feed the system. So once we uh, collectively as living beings have healed from this system and we have gone through this purging process and we no longer have any need for these narcissists and we see them coming a mile away, then they will cease to exist. And therefore, the egoic consciousness will eventually die as well. Because we're coming to the end of the story, all of the narcissists are being exposed and this the reason they're being exposed is because we don't have any need for them anymore. And so they're coming into the light. There's a bit of confusion because narcissists copy and mimic people. They can appear to be empathetic, they can appear to be good people and hide it for a while. They don't understand authenticity. This is why they rely on words. They rely on their words to carry them through. So they will tell you what they are. They will tell you that they're a good guy or a good girl. They will tell you that they are um, learning the truth. Whatever it is that they want you to believe about them, they will tell it to you. But you will soon find that their behavior is not congruent with their words. This is a lack of integrity a lack of wholeness, a lack of um, consistency. They don't really understand what it is they're, ta they're talking about. They just throw the words at you and hoping that you'll believe them. And also, you can experience somebody who is good to you, but not good to other people. Or they're good to other people, but not good to you. So you will see an incongruence in that way as well. Generally speaking, we want to see people as we see ourselves. And this is what they're expecting. This is what they're hoping. It's like if you're a, a truther, if you're a loving being, they are relying on you to cast your light on them and see them in a positive way because they are part of this truth community. And so they think they can fly under the radar and hide. Really, they're hoping that you don't see them, you don't catch them out. They end up showing themselves and they end up revealing who they really are and they are just masquerading. There are a lot less people who are living beings than you think. A lot of people insist that they're being gang stalked, insist that they're being, uh, that they are targeted individuals. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not. It's all in your mind. It is self-created. I'm not saying that it isn't real. I'm not saying that it isn't happening. Sure, it's happening, but it's self-created. And because it's self-created, you can uncreate it. You can get past that. I'm not saying this to be um, hurtful or disrespectful. You have to understand how this world works. You manifest whatever you focus on. And so if you are focused on this idea that you are being targeted, you will manifest experiences that make you believe that you are targeted because you believe it. 
So there's going to be people who show up in your experience who follow you. People who seem to be looking at you, seem to be watching you. You will time it so that you turn around and you look at someone who happens to be looking at you. You will think that you are having migraines because you have a 5G tower outside of your building. You will think that they are transmitting energies and voices. and But also, you are tapped into the fear frequency. When you're tapped into the fear frequency, there's a lot of things in that frequency that get projected outward from the ego consciousness, the fear frequency consciousness, that you're going to be receptive to. So you're going to start seeing those things, you're going to start receiving those things, and they are very real to you because everything here comes down to perception. The fact is, is that you have the opportunity to leave that behind. People who stay in this area of fear, in this area of perception, um, they can get locked into this sort of schizophrenic or psychotic, psychosis mindset. And then you become susceptible to believing a lot of things that aren't real. It's, again, perception. You can develop psychosis by going into conspiracy theories and the truth because you start to believe your perception. You start to believe certain things, very strange things, and because you believe strange things, your reality starts to change. And then you start to believe the things that you perceive and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is a cycle. I've taken a look into this young woman who is diagnosed schizophrenic, who has a YouTube channel, and she can basically see through the veil, however it's fear-based. And what I understand about schizophrenics is that they get stuck there. It does seem to me that schizophrenics uh, have a break for whatever reason and they can see through the veil. They don't know what they're seeing, they don't know what they're looking at, and they get scared. And cannot move past that point for whatever reason. It may be a mental block, it may be that they're NPCs, and um, you can have this happen if you take certain psychedelic drugs. It can cause a schizophrenic break and trap you there. Or if you don't know what you're looking at and you get scared and you can't move past the fear, you can become schizophrenic or psychotic, potentially. I'm not a therapist and I'm not a psychiatrist, so um, this is basically just based on my understanding of the mind and the truth and how I see things in their function here. The experiences that this woman had, she was showing these videos of people who uh, were doing a reenactment, or they're called uh, schizophrenic simulation, so they would do like a reenactment of what it's like to be schizophrenic. And she said that they were a little dramatized, or a little over the top, based on her personal experience of what it's like. So much of what she experiences is, th it's all fear-based. She'll think that there's like a, um, energy being projected into her mind and burning her brain and she'll feel it or um, she'll think that the the clerk behind the counter is talking about her and wants to hurt her um, she'll think that the people in the store are colluding with one another and talking with one another about her and all of these are actually realistic in a sense in the sense that it is based on this feedback loop of what you believe you perceive and what you perceive you believe. In a schizophrenic mindset, it's a bit heightened. And another thing that she said that she would hallucinate things that weren't there. 
um, and that's totally possible as well if you are in the fear experiencing like sort of hyper reality in a sense like like everything around you is kind of sentient the TV was talking to her she said that it doesn't talk to her directly it's more coded and I was like well yeah that's true it does <laughs> The part where schizophrenics get stuck is that they can't move past it. They can't get out of it. It's like they are victim to it in a, in a way. Um, it's like this is because of my illness that I see these things and there's nothing I can do about it. I don't know if there is something they can do about it. If they are NPCs, for example. There may be a block there preventing them from moving past it, so... But everything comes down to what you believe, what you perceive, and if you do not have control over that, you will not move past it. This has to do with depression, mental illness, anxiety, psychosis. Unless you have a block that prevents you from seeing past that point, which is a very real thing, you should be able to move past it. If you don't understand how the mind works, if you don't understand how this world works, and that it is a mind creation, then you're going to continue to believe what you perceive. And you're going to fall victim to it and think that it is there's nothing you can do about it, and that it's an external thing when it really it's an internal thing. A lot of this stuff is very, it's very sensitive for many people. It's very hard to talk about it because many of your loved ones, our loved ones, have these afflictions. They have these um, perceptions, disorders, mental illnesses, what have you. And it's painful to come to these realizations or it's painful to even hear about it and uh, I don't like talking about it. Essentially, what it boils down to is, do these conspiracy theories change your life? Do they directly affect your life? If not, then move on. And here's the thing, um, sometimes you won't know whether it directly affects your life or not because a lot of people will say, well, flat earth, why does it matter? How is it going to affect my life? How is it relevant? If you don't have any interest in knowing where you live, if you don't care about knowing where you live, then move on. Don't look at it. Just don't, don't waste your time. If you're asking that kind of question, then you don't wanna know the truth. So you don't need to know anyway. Do not believe truthers who tell you that that doesn't matter. Do not believe truthers who tell you that nobody can have all of the truth because those people are probably either shills or agents who they themselves cannot have all the truth because they're not designed to. So this doesn't mean that you know everything there is to know about the entire universe. That's stupid. That's just ridiculous. That that is not the point here. The point is to have all the pieces of the puzzle. The point is to put the pieces together. The point is to know who you are, where you are, why you're here, and what you're supposed to do. If it doesn't fall into that category, then it's irrelevant. Now granted, there are not many people who have multiple pieces of truth. And there will be many people who, if they will tell you that they know more than you, but they won't tell you what they know because they're just narcissists who have to tell you that they know better than you. And there are people who do have multiple pieces and there are very few who have a lot of the pieces. The whole point is to have all of the pieces. You can look at it as fun. The conspiracy theories are fun and interesting and, and they're very uh, engaging. And you know, it's like a big puzzle to figure out and it, it's fun. 
but you know sometimes that fun will lead you to other things so maybe that's the level you're at maybe you're just starting out and you haven't hit something that shattered your paradigm yet so you have to push past that you have to be inquisitive you have to be curious you have to explore and find out for yourself what is the true nature of this reality most people don't care most people think truth is just a hobby most people don't live the truth most people think oh it doesn't really matter um I can do it on the weekends and you know just a, it's an entertaining thing for me to do a little curiosity but you know how's it really going to affect my life I still have to pay my bills and if you think that way then don't bother don't bother go spend time with your family go spend time making money go spend time you know playing in the matrix because that's really where you belong because you're not going to move past it you're not going to find the real truth The truth is simple and it's also complex. It's a very strange, bewildering experience we're going through here. Ask yourself this, do you care about yourself and others? Do you care about the truth? Do you care about finding the real truth? Does it matter to you? Some people will lie to themselves. Some people will tell themselves that it does and it really doesn't. You've got to be honest with yourself. Are you being honest with yourself? You have to be willing to let other people see you as crazy because nothing matters more than the truth. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel. If you like my content, kindly consider leaving a contribution. Like, share, subscribe, leave a supportive comment, and be sure to subscribe to my backup channels and visit my website.